problems. Lots of them. <laughs> when we got this thing in, I immediately saw that we had an issue with mm -hmm. our steering system. Yeah, and I, I saw the gigantic crank pulley. And while it's running, I can hear the alternator screaming. <laughs> At idle. Yeah. Which means it's really screaming yeah. when you're going down the road. So what we're gonna be talking about today, folks, is we're gonna come in here and actually start looking at what's going on with the pulleys. Because I don't know if you guys realize this, most of these cars are old enough to have children of their own that are like graduating college and going out and making their own life. These cars are in their 50s, a lot of them. And there is absolutely no telling what's been going on with what you have underneath the hood. What we're gonna talk about today is how to figure out what's going on and what you probably need to do to make that happen and fixed. Let's get stuff and make things happen. Yay, stuff and things. All right, one of the first things I want to talk about is what can happen whenever you have a situation like this where you have a cobbled together system. That's obviously what we have going on here. The, the crank pulley is too big. The, the power string pulley is too small. The water pump pulley is about the only one that looks like it's right on this engine. Um, and so what can happen in those situations is a, you're overdriving your, uh, your components. You're overdriving your power steering pump when the pulley's too small. Um, and what I mean by overdriving is it's just spinning too fast. Your rotation is too much. But because we have a misalignment situation here that's actually really severe on this power steering pump, what that's going to do is it's going to change the wear pattern on the, uh, the pump itself. And the other problem we have here is that the power steering pulley itself doesn't have enough belt on it. This belt right here, there's not enough belt on either it or the AC pump for it to do its job correctly. Um, because if you don't have enough surface area, it's actually going to cause the pulley to possibly stop because there's just not enough traction with the belt for it to do the job it's supposed to do. You want more area, surface area on here like this should be, you know, where it is here, but more around the bottom back on this side so that it's not just sectioning it like it is right here because our pulley on the AC pump is from here to here. That's not enough surface area. We had the same problem on the F100, which we're going to be fixing with the change of the belt positions on it. But this situation that we have going on right here is pretty bad because A, it makes it a lot easier for it to throw belts, but B, it's also bad for bearing wear and things on your power steering pump because of the amount of off angle uh, pull that it's causing on that. So two bad things right away on that. Now Cam's gonna come in here and he's gonna show you how to do the measurements on these pulleys to be able to get what you need to get as far as the numbers to make sure that you got the right ratios on your uh, pulley setup. All right, so I'm going to go through and start measuring these pulleys. Uh, there are a couple well, the crank pulley has a smaller inner sheath, so that one's going to be a little bit different, but the rest of them are pretty simple. Tape measure. These aren't going to be exact readings because they're in car, you can't get exactly right. But we're just trying to get a base of what our drive is, pretty much. If we're overdriven, underdriven, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to go to the main crank pulley first and go across it get the diameter of it so it's coming out right at about 7 15 16 so I've got all these written down on a piece of cardboard already because I like to do my homework so I'm just going to speed through these but generally it's just measuring the pulleys so on this crank pulley like I said there is an inner sheath so you kind of want to go in like that just to take a measurement of the distance between the inner and outer sheaths now this gives you the dimension difference between the radius. Now on the diameter, you have to double the radius measurement. So that one right there, it's 5 eighths smaller on the radius. So it is 1.25 smaller on the diameter. So I've got that marked down as well, but you wanna make sure, so you calculate all of the belts that are driven off of that sheath at a different value than the main big sheath. So then you just go through, measure all of your pulleys like so. Our AC pulley is right at five and three quarter. Our little tiny power steering pulley right at four and three quarter. And our little, little alternator pulley is right at two and a half ish. 
All right, so I've got these all written down on my cardboard already, and I will show you how to do the math in just a second. We. All right, so we are at our nice new bench top. I've got our numbers here. These just represent the pulleys. This one here is the crank pulley. That is the alternator pulley, water pump, AC compressor, power steering pump. So the first thing you're gonna do, get yourself a calculator because math, me no math good. So we have a two and a half inch pulley here and a seven inch 15 sixteenths pulley here. So obviously half inch is 0.5, 15 sixteenths is about 0.93. So what you wanna do is your ratio of drive to driven, your driven pulley is 2.5, with a ratio is a fraction, and then you divide it by 7.93. All right, so once you have your drive and driven pulley measurements, 2.5 divided by 7.93, and that is your drive ratio. So we have a 0.3 between these two pulleys. Now that is overdrive. Any, any drive ratio that is smaller than one is overdrive. So it takes 0.3 revolutions of your main pulley to get a revolution of your alternator pulley. So that's really bad. Um, well, not really bad. That's actually good for like idle time, uh, traffic, stuff like that, because your alternator is gonna be charging really well at idle. But when you're doing a lot of driving, highway speed, your alternator is going to be singing going down the road and it will burn them up very fast. So I'm gonna go through and do the other mass here. Now on this crank pulley, we have a inner sheath that is smaller and it drives the other three gears. So we need to go ahead and calculate the dimension for the inner sheath. Now it's 5 eighths smaller on the radius. That is 1.25 off the diameter of that. So 7.93 minus 1.25 equals 6.68. So this is just going to designate the inner sheath, 6.6 inner sheath. So now you just go through, calculate the same. As you can see, all of our pulleys are overdriven. It's not exactly a bad thing. Uh, I believe this car was set up for a lot of traffic because this came out of California. So that kind of makes sense to me, but also this is all cobbled together. So our crank pulley is massive. Um, I think that's wrong for the whole setup. All right, now this is for basic pulleys. Um, there's a compound pulley, which is a small pulley driving a really big pulley that's got a smaller pulley in it that drives another small pulley. Now there's belts running here. Jeff went to art school, not me. <laughs> so that, that is a compound toilet roll. <laughs> that is supposed to be a compound belt drive a small pulley driving a bigger pulley, which has a smaller pulley in it, driving another whatever size pulley. This just gives you gear reduction basically in the system. Now, if you're doing, if you're having to calculate these, use a calculator online, uh, it's way simpler and just, just way better. And you don't have to deal with my art skills. <laughs> I'm not an artist. <laughs> Nor do you play one on TV. <laughs> no. It looks like a compound toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's a little house and something comes in here and it has a little elevator that takes it up to the top floor. Complex <laughs> toilet roll for how <laughs> shit it is. <laughs> it's really it's really not that bad. I mean it's it's I didn't know what those were, so but you know, I mean one of the things that you can run into with these cars is the fact that 
the, originally that 67 could have come out with a 289 mm -hmm. and nothing on the car. Yeah, it'd have like a Just one or an two And it would be a one sheave yeah. uh, crank plate. And that's what happens a lot of times is guys will say, well, I want to start adding accessories to this car. And so, again, you have to remember, 50 plus year old car, mm -hmm. anything, and I mean anything could happen. Yeah. Um, guys will go in and they'll put the serpentine systems off the Fox Body Mustangs. Those are horrifyingly hard to find now. It's even probably easier, honestly, to find a pulley system like, you know, a stock style pulley, sy pulley system in the aftermarket mm -hmm. than it is to find the Fox Body serpentine system, yeah. which I like. Yeah. But then you have to start worrying about reverse rotation water pumps and mm -hmm. all that goes along with that. Knowing what your pulleys need to be will allow you to be able to go and say, okay, I need this size and this and this if you're going to the salvage yard. Yeah. Honestly, finding this stuff in a salvage yard anymore, no. horrifying. I, I wouldn't even waste the time trying, honestly. Because you can run into a lot um, of different things. You and I were talking about this off camera before we started the episode. The truck pulley systems a lot of times are different than the passenger yep. car pulley systems. And I noticed that there are differences within passenger car because at one point in my life i thought it must be that all these are mm -hmm. the same no nah, it's it's really based on what rpm the vehicle is going to be existing at like a truck you're normally going to be below 3000 rpm for a large part of its time so that's where it wants to operate correctly so on that you'd probably have a small alternator pulley smaller water pump pulley but a decent sized crank pulley and I've even run across like Mavericks. There was a Maverick I pulled a pulley system off of years and years ago out of the salvage yard. And the pulley was really big. It was mm -hmm. the same size as the one that's in this car. Yeah. And it even had, because then later on in the life of these cars, they started adding Thermactor and all these different things to them. Mm -hmm. So you had four a four sheave system with a really tiny pulley on the back for the Thermactor. And then you had a pulley for the water pump. Then you had a pulley for the uh, air conditioning system. And another mm -hmm. pulley. Tons of stuff. And there's our, like, for instance, in the in the FE line, a lot of those cars have a dual sheave water pump pulley mm -hmm. to allow for running the alternator, which is also a dual sheave. Why they did that, I don't know. If you know why Ford put dual sheave pulleys on the alternator and the water pump to run the alternator, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you on that. We got a lot of you guys writing in doing some really cool stuff and information like that. I think that this is a bigger thing than a lot of guys realize because mm -hmm. I mean a lot of guys can go out and start looking at this and realize that they've got it may be why they're having an overheating problem in their car. Oh, yeah. If you know? that is an underdrive to the water pump you'll have overheating that right there the 0 0.3 overdrive to the alternator will kill an alternator. Yeah. Because let's do the math real quick. So to do the math for RPM here you take your RPM of your engine multiply it by that your drive so idle at 750 RPM times 3, 1, that is a 232 RPM gain. So plus again to 750. So at 750 RPM at idle, your alternator is turning 982 RPM. So you're right, basically idling that alternator to 1,000 1, RPM. RPM. Yeah. And then beyond that, if you're going so, up to highway speeds, which let's just say it's 22, 2,500 RPM. 2,500 times 0. 0.31, that was wrong. We, we don't math much around no, here. No. He's doing better than I would have done. I would have already quit. See, I just I'd did, thrown the did, thing did, across. Did it again. <laughs> 2,500 times 0. 0.31 plus 2,500. So at 2,500 RPM, that alternator will be turning 3,275. Either you need a really good high performance alternator yeah. or you need to reduce pulley sizes. Yeah. Or well, because you're just you're just either increase the pulley size on the alternator or decrease or decrease the, the main crank. Probably it might be easier to increase the size of the, the pulley here. Yeah. But even so, you got uh, the yeesh. the real problem solver for this would be to drop crank pulley size out of it. You know what the real problem solver is? The entire car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dumpster. Wrong answer, <laughs> but the entire pulley system, just change it all yeah. out. Yeah. That's Either with a, a V-belt pulley system mm -hmm. or a really nice um, serpentine. serpentine system with the aftermarket stuff. Because yeah. at this point, there are so many bad things going on. We know that the power steering pump is wrong. We know that uh, th this, is, this is actually a correct pulley, but not for this pulley. And it's only a single sheath. So to run these accessories, you really want to wrap it over 
on the exactly. second sheath. Because I've had that happen before with a system with a buddy's car where he had, I believe it was the AC was set off wrong. It was too mm -hmm. far out. He kept throwing he kept throwing belts. I'm amazed this one doesn't. I really am too. That's probably the worst one I've yeah. ever seen. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's yeah. bad. My 66 was bad and it would chuck it at about 4,500. <laughs> I wouldn't take that car to 4,500 right now. Yeah, probably. Alternator has left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> along with every belt between here and our Albuquerque. Um, all right, well, that's really basically it, folks. We really wanted to kind of show you what to do to look out for it. Something that you may not think could be an issue on your car. Uh, and I will uh, say that, you know, you're just trying to get ratios right. I'm mm -hmm. not going to sit here and tell you, you need this pulley, this pulley, this pulley, because yeah. we're not just talking forward. This is anything with pulleys on it. And this is also setting up your car. I mean, if you're doing drag strip stuff, you want underdrive on your pulleys because yes. you're going to be hitting 5,000 RPM a lot. If you're sitting in traffic, like I think this one was built to, you want overdrive. Right. So this one for traffic would actually be set up pretty good, I think. Well, besides it and, being absolutely horrible. <laughs> who's going to drive? Who's going to drive this thing in traffic? I mean, unless you get stuck in traffic. Me. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I drove. I drove the '66 with no air conditioning, no windows, nothing. I'll drive anything in traffic. I don't care. I understand that you're weird and you'll do things like yeah. that. I'm just saying the average Joe. Yeah, no. They're going to take their 2010 Prius and go on oh, about their time. God. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> yes. You can get lift kits for those now. I don't even want to know. I mean, literally, there's something that you've told me that I just really don't know. <laughs> Speaking of things that knowing and wanting to know, I do want you to know about our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. We get together, we have a ball, we do tech Q&A and all that. And what this money for the Patreon group goes to is to help me work with the kids here and to also pay Andrew uh, a little bit of a salary to come in and edit for me on the weekdays. And it also trains him how to become an editor and let him have that as a thing you can put on a resume. So we're really working toward making this something where kids can actually come in here and get job training for operating cameras, editing and things like that for their future. So it's a way for kids to be able to see what it's like to work in an actual live studio. So if you want to support that, please do. Uh, just go out and check out the Patreon account for us. The people that have been going up by me here, all uh, this side, Andrew says it's over here. These people that have been going up beside me all this time, those are the guys who put their money where their mouth is and have been a big financial support to allow me to have Andrew come on board. So thank you to those folks. Also, what I'd like for you to do is to go out and subscribe to the channel. We have a blank spot on the Paul wall for our silver plaque. And we are danger close to it. We're at 90,000 subscribers right now. You know, we've had guys write in and say they've subscribed their grandmother who was confused why she was getting suddenly car videos on her YouTube stuff where she was only looking at, you know, crochet videos before that. I don't know, do, do people in a little bit older age group than me, do, do they do crochet now? I mean, I don't see grandmas what is, what in my age crochet? group. <laughs> it's not a thing anymore. I, yeah, <laughs> I just don't see grandmas in my age group doing that. I mean, they just didn't seem like a thing. Just I, I can say I've seen one person in the past five years crocheting, and that's because they were really bored at their desk and not doing anything. <laughs> That person needs they were, more to do. Well, they were getting paid to do it. So that's probably oh, wow. Yeah, it. no. Okay. Um, I guess that's really it. So do me a favor. You guys be kind to each other, love on each other. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto, Auto Resto Mod. Mod. Now I got to call March because I got to get I got to get rid of that stuff. That's just nasty. The bad thing is get marching on it. Oh God, you hang around with me way too much. <laughs> um, the bad thing is, is when we put that really pretty March system in that engine bay. Yes, the engine's gonna look. Doo -doo. It's gonna look douchey. Yeah. Because we we'll need to do like, you know, clean up the valve covers again. We gotta put the intake manifold on. Yeah. Forgot about that part. We gotta still do that. We need to do that anyway. We got and we need. I'm, there's nothing against those type of ignition, the HEI type ignition systems. It's god ugly. It's not Ford. It's, yeah, it's just ugly. not. Yeah. The small cap ones are fine. I don't mind those as much. I haven't seen those. Before. Yeah, you can get a DUI in the small cap now. It take, takes the blue module off the top. and Where does it, it put it? Somewhere. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It just puts it somewhere. Anywhere you want it. <laughs> you can stick that thing anywhere yeah. you want it. Okay. You can stick the coil wire to the passenger seat. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> I don't like passengers. <laughs> you are becoming a curmudgeon far too early. Oh yeah. We um, need to 
get you out I'm socially. An old angsty soul. <laughs> an old angsty soul. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. I'm gonna go get a beer now.